What is going on, everyone? Welcome to status update number six. It's going to be a quick one. I apologize. I've got a lot going on. We're we're packing, we're writing, we're contenting, ing, and, and so this inevitably is just going to be a bit shorter than most. And it wasn't a massive week in golf. Not a ton going on off off the golf course. All eyes were on the Super Bowl, and. We'll just go from there, okay? We'll, we'll talk about my experience at the WM Phoenix Open. It was unlike any other, I would say, my own personal experience and this version of the WM Phoenix Open. We'll talk a little bit about Go DJ, Nesma DJ, Go DJ, Dustin Johnson, Tall Glass of Water, and we got some Tiger news that's going to drop uh, around 7.30 Eastern. Later today, he's got his press conference for his new clothing line, which uh, he's hinted at over the last week or so. Uh, let's just say I'm not too optimistic about that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's where we're going to end up eventually. Uh, but first, I just want to thank you all for subscribing. We're over 160 now for commenting. I'm receiving some very nice ones, which are always uh, pleasant to see. And I'm receiving a few mean ones, which means, you know, you're probably doing something right. If people are coming to your videos saying you suck eggs and they coming back the next week, Uh, that's typically a sign of success in my book. And so keep on commenting, keep on subscribing, keep on liking. It, it, it does not go unnoticed. It is very appreciative. And it kind of gives me a boost of morale to keep doing this every week. <clears throat> Enough jibber jabbing. WM Phoenix Open Week. I got there early Tuesday, I think, early Tuesday. Spent all day walking the course, talking to a few guys in the media center, typing away. Uh, like I said, but the real action probably didn't start until Wednesday. Wednesday, the rain comes in. It's cold. It's disgusting out. Just absolutely brutal conditions. I packed like a complete jackass. I was out there wearing like four sweaters in a rain jacket, a very light, thin rain jacket. <clears throat> and the action really began on the par 316th. The pro am was canceled. They have the shot at glory where you have guys. I guess I should probably backtrack a little bit to just a funny story. Wednesday morning, I wake up at my hotel. I go down. I get breakfast. There's one man in the breakfast room. Nick Saban, ball coach. I'm like, all right, how many people have an opportunity to have a one-on-one with Nick Saban in their entire lives? There's someone else at his table, but but he's getting coffee. And black, of course. You know, no nonsense type of guy. He doesn't need cream, doesn't need sugar. I just go, hey coach, great to meet you. You know, so congratulations on a, a great career and whatnot. Oh yeah, you know. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. You know, it's sad to see those some of the leave some of the guys, but I'm 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 really happy for this new chapter of my life. That's fantastic, coach. I I'm I'm really happy. Shake his hand. Talk for a minute tops, move on to our respective days. He's in the pro, not playing with Justin Thomas, which was weird. Okay, back to the shot at glory. It was impossible to get him, even with my media credentials, even with other people uh, vouching for me, getting in the actual stadium on the ground was impossible. These security guards had completely lost their mind. Their egos were the size of an elephant. And then shout out to my guy, Thunderbird Ed comes in. It's like, yo, we got to get this guy. I get in. I do a hit for local news. I hit Glenn Powell with the horns up, which we'll talk about soon. Like an absolute douche. Immediately regretted it. Luckily, he reciprocated it. So I had that going for me. And I'm on TV doing my thing. They're hitting shots behind us, yelling. It's pretty much a who's who of influencers golf people, Scottsdale legends, uh, celebrities, 
like Michael Phelps, like former athletes, Michael Phelps, Larry Fitzgerald, Adrian Beltre, uh, pretty much a who's who of people I do not like, if we're, <laughs> if we're being honest. So I got in and out of there quick, but later that evening, <laughs> I'm invited to a waste management event. They're having a little shindig. I walk in, first person I see, Nick Saban, ball coach. Earlier that day, it's announced while he's on the golf course, Saban's joining ESPN, going to be a college football analyst, college game day. He's he's joining the worldwide leader. Go up to ball coach, head ball coach. Say, hey, it's okay. How you doing? I go, you couldn't have given me the fucking scoop, man. He start he starts cracking up. We're laughing. I say, have a great night. Congratulations. We go our separate ways. That's it on Saban. Thursday at the Phoenix Open was obviously very weather affected. I got a nice tour with the ops team early in the morning. But outside of that, not a whole lot of action, not a whole lot of golf. Just cold and ugly. Once again, it was it was the theme of the week. And so I think because of that, that rain delay, not a lot of people being on the grounds. It really set up the rest of the week, both obviously from a golf perspective, but a fan perspective as well. Because once I got to the course on Friday, the vibe was very strange. It was one of those things where you kind of just knew something was going to happen this week. You didn't know what exactly, but you knew something was off. Something was adrift. And Friday was nuts. Right. And and we're not even talking about the worst day yet. Friday was nuts. You couldn't move. You were like sardines. Beyond 18 was just pretty much a mosh pit around 16, which is around 11 as well. 10 green, uh, 17, obviously, and 15 too was it was standing room only. Could not walk. If I didn't have inside the ropes access, I honestly, it, it would be a very, tough viewing experience if you want to watch the actual golf you go to the front nine and you actually get pretty close to these guys but back nine is obviously where the action is you have that great finishing stretch if if you are trying to watch some uh, consequential shots and it was just a mud pit people were already mud sliding people were blitzed at 8 a.m already and so i'm not totally surprised about what happened on saturday with the world war z situation scottsdale pd shutting down the gates alcohol vendors shutting down sales the fans fighting back yelling at scott or uh, zach johnson yelling at billy horschel the meme new like breaking the worst person you know just made a good point came to fruition and i think it's pretty easy to see why all of this happened. One, Scottsdale in general is just it's a college town filled with 30, 40, and 50-year-olds who still think they're in college, but now they have money. Two, you have the weather delay throughout the week. People are just like, there's a lot of pent-up, pent-up energy. And you see the WM Phoenix Open on TV. You see 16, you see all the craziness, the wildness, people yelling, hooting and hollering, as I often say. And that kind of just got extended to various points of the golf course. It got extended to 18, which was, I mean, there was a bottled blonde suite lining 18 with bottle girls. You could see their pictures. They each were responsible for a suite up there. Um, it extended to obviously 15 and 17 as well and unfortunately it got extended to some other holes like 11 in billy horschel's case and so i i get the players fighting back i mean you people shouldn't be talking in in people's backswings on holes not kind of adjacent to that stretch adjacent to 15 through 18 i'd say but it's what you sign up for at the same time. I, I get it. No one wants to see that big, 
fat guy, let's call it, let's call it what it is, this extremely overweight man, mudslide, people are juggling his titties. It's disgusting. Mixing a water, my guy. It, they don't want to see that uh, Scottsdale native, his butt crack showing when he slides down as well, chugging a beer, his pants almost fall off. No one wants to uh, hear about that woman falling off the 16th grandstands. Um, and it's the knee jerk reaction is uh, they've gone too far. They've lost the golf tournament. This is disgusting. How could they? How could they? I used to love the Phoenix Open, but this year, no. No. So calm down, okay? It's four days. It's almost like the purge where <laughs> you let people get it all out of their system. And then we're on a re real golf this week at Riviera. So we're done with that. Congratulations to Nick Taylor, who's going to be a menace in Montreal. You look at his wins, four wins. Beat Phil at Pebble Beach. Canadian Open, fantastic, obviously. Playoff over Tommy Fleetwood. And this one, five birdies in his last half dozen holes. Absolute ice in his veins down the stretch for a victory. Kudos to him. A great champion. Okay, let's talk about Dustin Johnson for a little bit. Dustin Johnson wins Live Golf Las Vegas. Emerges from the final group of John Rahm, Bryson DeChambeau. At one point on Saturday, they had half a dozen people tied for the lead with about five holes to go. Uh, Jason Kokrak, DJ Bryson. Taylor Gooch, Matt Wolf, and Peter Uline potentially. Maybe John Rom also in there. DJ Birdie's second to last hole. Gets a weird TIO relief on the last. Hits a great shot, wins. And it's just a reminder how naturally gifted Dustin Johnson is. If you had to give me a choice of picking a golfer to more or less roll out of bed and shoot around a five under, Hasn't touched a golf club in a, you know, a month or so. It's Dustin Johnson. And he pretty much admitted it last week in Mayakoba. Said he didn't practice a ton this offseason. Shocker. DJ's always been a guy to enjoy life outside the ropes. He was very surprised at his play in Mayakoba. And he rolled it into a victory. So it's just another example of Dustin Johnson's natural God-given ability is him beating a field of Rom, Brooks, Bryson. It's uh you kind of don't roll into that unless you're someone like Dustin Johnson. Kudos to him. He's always so fun to watch. He's still got some major championship exemptions in him from that 2020 Masters. So that's great to see. Lastly, oh, this this Tiger Woods. This Tiger Woods brand, guys, I think it's ugly. I think it's really bad. Sunday Red, it's going to be introduced later today uh, there in L.A. It's more or less a combination of Slozenger and Puma, uh, and it's, it's just bad. It looks like he's going to be wearing the logo on his chest. It looks like he's going to be wearing the logo on his glove. And if he wears the logo on his hat as well, Hopefully the hat's just the TW brand, right? Then it's going to be really bad. But, dude, like, what are we doing? Tiger Woods is not a fashionista. Look at some of his photos from Tiger Jam in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, where he gets to dress himself. He's wearing all white. He's wearing jeans. He's wearing, like, see-through transition lenses glasses. It's really bad. And, and so I haven't seen all of it, but I am preemptively out. I'm being proactive about the situation. I understand anything Tiger touches can sell. Sure. I think this will be a test of that 48 years old, barely on TV on an annual basis, maybe, you know, five tournaments, maybe he'll play a little more this year and just an ugly design. We'll see. We shall, we shall see. All right, that, that is unfortunately all I'm going to have for you guys this week. I've got a pack. I'm going to Florida here shortly. And my scheduling, personal scheduling, was very bad this week. That is on me. I apologize. But we have, we have a really fun week with the Genesis Invitational. 
great event. They finally have a cut, which is great. Tiger Woods is playing. We'll talk about his performance. I'm expecting a finish around, let's see, the field it's like 75-ish, I believe. I think the finish, I think he'll finish. Mm, is he going to make the cut? I think he misses the cut. Yeah. Tiger Woods will miss the cut. Like, barely. I hope. Honestly, I hope he missed the cut. That would make my life a lot easier. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Not a lot is happening outside the ropes, which is fantastic. I will take that. I, like, I don't really care about PJ Tour players saying they want a punishment for a live player to return. Like, get in line, buddy. Your opinion is not new. Whatever. Okay, that's all I got. For producer Pat, I guess thank you. Intern Rick, much better this week. I'm keeping an eye on you, man. Keeping an eye on you. I'm Patrick. This was status update number six. I appreciate you. I see you. And I will be talking to you very soon.